the power one. Uh, this is Gary Cohorn. He is virtual from Dallas this week. Next week he'll be with us in person. Uh, but he is the man of many titles uh, from Preston Press Church of Christ. So uh, his class is power one. Uh, singles, um, how they are effective still in church, their role in the church. So um, without that, I will uh, start us off in a prayer, and then I'll turn it over to him. So let's pray real quick. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful day and all of our many wonderful blessings, everything that you do for us each and every day, Lord. So I pray that you uh, be with us this evening. Give us open minds and open hearts uh, to dive into your word, uh, to learn more about you and grow, grow close to you and one another. We thank you so much for your son and sacrifice for each and every one of us. In his name that I pray. Amen. All yours, Gary. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Austin. Appreciate it. <clears throat> so how are we doing tonight, folks? And you know this is interactive, right? This is not just a one-way street. And even though I'm three hours away from you, I still want to I'll listen real close and see if I can hear you guys yell out. So has the week been okay? What's what's the has the weather in Oklahoma City been uh, fall weather? It's been beautiful. Good, good. Well, well, it's been been pretty beautiful here in Dallas as well. And uh, anyway, again, this is the third our third week together, third of four, and I'm. Uh, I've looked forward to this, looked forward to, be, to being with you guys. It's, it's been an enjoyable experience for me. I hope it has been for you. So let's just kind of reboot real quickly. And, and again, by the way, any point along the way, I would love it if you all would have uh, comments, questions, interaction. And it, ultimately, ultimately, always, for me anyway, for all of the years that I've been involved with, with ministry with people, <clears throat> my question is the so what question. So what do we do with this? And I'm really interested in and you're so what? What do you do with what we're what we're what we're exploring here? And the question at the top, the the the, the reason that the that I was invited, at least the the conversation that Preston shared with me, that some of you all had shared with some there to bring to the top is, can God? What's the calling that God has for single adults, single people, if if He has one at all? And I think implicitly most of us believe that He does. But sometimes, and sometimes it may be kind of clear, but sometimes it may be kind of muddy, and particularly de depending on circumstances, background, demographic groups, or whatever. So that's what this journey has been. And tonight we're going to go, we're going to go forward, but we're also here in a second going to take a couple of steps back. Uh, thank you, Austin, for being for navigating the screen for us. Uh, if you'll go ahead and hit that first slide, uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, skip past that one. That just kind of helps me remember who I am. So this one is the uh, power of one voice. And I am, uh, this whole slide is dedicated to this statement. I'm convinced that God calls all of his people, all of his people to ministry and to mission and to service. And that really does mean all. And this calling is both for, uh, it's general and it's specific, general for everybody and specific uh, for each of us. And we're gonna, we, we, we addressed that some last time. We're gonna get into it a little bit more tonight and again, I'm interested to the degree that you would like to share, or maybe popcorn here out the, around the room and kind of go back and forth, what that is meaning for you at this point. Uh, <clears throat> so next one, if you would, Austin, the next slide. Oh, maybe we missed one. The power of one choice. The, 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 uh, I don't know. If, if, well, I'll go ahead and read this. I don't know if she, she included this or not. Maybe we did skip one. So yeah, so, so go ahead and keep it there if you would. The power of one choice, the God of the universe has called you and called me to this one life to use for him, life with him, life for him. And, and I believe, and this is the phrase, we're going to use the word choice a lot, and choice versus destiny versus hanging out versus wait and see, whatever, uh, the power of one choice. And I believe there is significant power in making a decision. And we see it in a variety of contexts. So, so before we do move forward with this, with tonight's power of one choice, like we've done in the past, I want to do some quick backdrop here. And uh, so, uh, you know what? I'm wondering. Go forward if, you, if one slide, if you would, please. And one more. I think we have... Uh, that is, this is last week's slides. That's why it looks a little weird to me. Um, I don't know if I sent that one. Can you hear me, Austin? 
Yes, I can. Let me look for it. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm interested. Any comments or feedback uh, from the crowd, from the group here about what we've covered so far? The power of one life, which is, and in fact, this is what we're going to, we want to do a quick reboot from the past two weeks so we can get some continuity. The first night we spoke about the power of one life. As you may recall, we were talking about the questions that little boys and little girls get. All of us, uh, what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to be when you grow up? We answer that question without a lot of pollution involved. It's a very simple question. I want to be this. I want to be that because my daddy does or because it's the man down the street or the lady, one of my teachers or whatever. And so we do that. We There we go. So we choose, we choose sometimes to pick a life plan based on the next door neighbor who's a doctor or who works at, uh, auto, as an auto mechanic. And I like the tools and I want to get under the truck and do the same thing. Okay, so if you will now go to the next one. Okay, we'll get to this one. I, well, I'm gonna inter interrupt myself for just a second. Let's go on, jump on this slide. I believe this country is fascinated with the thing of choice, celebrates choice. We like to identify who the chosen one or chosen ones are. LeBron James is considered the chosen one. Some other people are too. Uh, it's fascinating to me as a as a person that uh, hangs out in human behavior and kind of looks and tries to dissect and see what's going on with all that, the show The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, uh, any, you may not want to say, I don't know if it's even a cool thing or not cool or stigma or whatever. Anyway, let's put a hand up if we've seen The Bachelor. You don't have to tell, you, tell whether you're a fan. Have you seen The Bachelor or The Bachelorette? Okay. I thought I saw a hand or two out there. Uh, what makes that interesting to people? This is, this is us talking here. Anyone have an idea about what makes it interesting? So someone in the crowd, tell us what The Bachelor or The Bachelorette is about. What's the context? And then we have silence. Anyone one, seen this movie? Anyone one been on this Go One ahead. guy, a bunch of girls trying to impress this one girl or one the other way around. Okay. Okay. There we go. Which is not like unlike a lot of other places that we see or we go to. It could be even it could even be that there's a local college campus in Edmond or Oklahoma City that may have some of that same thing going on. What's the difference, if there is any, in the Bachelor or the Bachelorette and what you might see out on campus or around town? Commercialized. Okay, yeah, they commercialize a lot. <clears throat> they do. They line people up and set them up and what mm -hmm. else? They decide right away that the person doing the choosing is like the ultimate person you would want to be with before right. they met them. Yeah. And there's not a lot of give and take in the relationships. It's all about what can you offer to this one person because they have their choice. Okay, that's great, great point. They're kind of the ultimate catch. It's like, how would I not want to be with, you know, Joe or Ramona or whoever over here? So yeah, that's, that's I got, I got you. And so, and, and it's interesting to me that there is this. The, 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 I hear people that tell me when they are, are into the show uh, that they really like, so one guy, one friend of mine says he likes to see a train wreck. Well, it is that, but there are a series of setups going and, and hanging out, making out uh, dates, going all different kinds of places. Again, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I do see the commercials. And so this, this, this development, this drama that develops and this upset and the crying that goes on when you last night told me that I was your everything, and now you're now you're spending time with Henrietta over here, and I'm not really sure why you you're doing that. And so I'm really I'm disillusioned. And at the end of this thing, someone gets a rose, and then someone some people say, well, the ultimate prize is not the rose, it's the ring, and whatever. It, but it, it continues to sustain it sustain itself. This show continues to have a lot of viewers and a lot of fans, and I believe part of it maybe because of the drama and part of it or the fantasy of what it would be like to be in that space but there is something about our wanting to see what the choice is the chosen person NFL draft has become not just a selection of athletes to play for a professional football team it's become a thing it's become an event there are weeks out months out people that love uh, any sports but I think NFL National Football League has done this more so than the other uh, professional sports leagues in creating this anticipation and who might be chosen and what's going to be the, who's the number one second 
second or third or fourth choice of quarterback or running back or whatever. So this thing of choice is significant. We watch it in music or entertainment awards. We see it in our personal achievements or professional achievements, people who get awards. Uh, we celebrate those on Facebook and some people don't. Some people rush for, away from them. We celebrate those friends of ours that get married or uh, the engagements and how that happens. Someone's choosing another person and they said, yes, there's this, there's this, I think baked into our culture, this appreciation for choice and being chosen. Uh, if you would, Austin, hit the next one, please, sir. The choice and choice in general, being selected, being chosen, I think is a profoundly important one in the life of all of us. God's people are not. It, 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 it resonates, it matters. But when you, when you consider the reality that the God of the universe actually chose us uh, and he's calling us to do the same. So choice is profoundly important in the life of all of us seeking God's calling. Again, remind you that that's the theme of what we're exploring. What is God's calling in your life and in mine? So that's true for everyone. And that does certainly include the, the single Christian, younger or not so young uh, backgrounds, a variety of backgrounds, no matter what they are, this matter of choice is significant. So tonight we're going to explore that. But before we do that, again, like we were doing here a second ago, we want to go do a quick a quick uh, review of the past two weeks. So if you'll hit that one, Austin, please. We'll jump into this. So, so two weeks ago, we identified this power of one life. And I do believe this. I do believe that one life, his life, her life, one life can make a significant impact, period. Now, if it's hooked up to God, then it has even more significance and more kingdom significance and more eternal significance. And we, we highlighted some key pieces about the person that's on the journey with Jesus, on the journey with the Father, with the Spirit, and way oversimplifying, but two primary tracks that I've always tried to, to raise up and try to encourage and empower in the lives of people I'm involved with. One is their how their, their discipleship life, how they're, how they're following Jesus, to, to what degree, it's ups and downs, it's bumps, it's highs and lows, but the, uh, but the, the relentless pursuit of Jesus, so following him, and then number two is his ambassadorship, as, as Paul identified, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21, plenty of other places, but more crystallized there, when he said we are actually his ambassadors, his representatives, so all our lives, the minute, the minute that I came out of that water, in April 14, 1940, 1940, 1974, uh, I in Dell City, Oklahoma, by the way, I was uh, on this journey of discipleship. And later I recognized by the good work of other people, I was becoming his representative in the spaces that I went to. And I did that when I was, when I was 12 years old at that time and throughout my life, that's been my journey. And if you're a Christian, that's yours too. So it's true for all of us, single, married, young, old, rich, poor, anyone and all of us. That's what we covered that first night. Hit the next slide, if you would, please. The second night, last week, we covered this power of one voice. We choose all kinds of voices around us. We choose the one to which we're going to listen. And that one, whatever that one is, it's going to help us become what that one is speaking to. And I mentioned to you in kind of a fancy for cognitive behavioral thought approach from a, from a, from the psychology world, uh, you know, fancy terms basically just mean when you were, when you're born, key people, key voices in your life spoke into your life regularly, thematically, and gave you thoughts, core beliefs, interpretations, automatic assumptions about who you are, about what they were, about what the world means, about if there is a God, what he, or, and some people will say she, I believe the God of the Bible, and so it's he, but what God believed about us, down the road, when we became his, when we chose to be his followers, then we listen ourselves to the shepherd's voice, as John 10 says, uh, and so we would listen to his voice to either the exclusion of all others, or at least we would listen to his voice, and that would help us cut away what voices didn't line up with him, and then this third bullet point, God's calling for his people we, we finished up last week with this one, is both general for all of us. It's holy. It's, call, it's a call to holiness. It's a call to obedience. It's a call to love and mercy and grace, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, all kinds of fruits of the Spirit. But it's also a calling 
to our specifics, the specific calling for each of us. So my, his call on my life may is always be different than, than the one on yours, maybe Austin different than the one on yours, maybe the one different from each of us. And so, uh, Janet, are you still, are you in the crowd tonight? Yes. Okay. It may be not only nuanced by your choice when you're a younger, uh, younger woman, but some of the things that, like you shared last time, when a, when a husband, a spouse uh, is no longer with you, and it was nine years ago, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And I want to be sensitive in bringing that up. Is it okay that I mention that? Yes. As I says, I already did. Uh, and so that, and, and, and everyone, I mean, Janet was good to mention that last time. Any one of us have all kinds of things that feed into this personal calling that we, that we call, that we listen to. And that is part, that defines to great extent our journey, but it's a journey only if we choose it. So now if you would hit this next slide, I really believe that tonight will be another key piece in this, in this journey of our our calling, our listening to and following God's calling as a single person, as a married person, as a left-handed third grader, whatever the case is. Look, if you would, at some of the reasons why I think choice is power is significant. One is because when, and, and if what we're going to do here in a second, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going <clears> to <throat> help you read it in the book. He calls us to make a choice for him. We don't have to do that. We just don't have to do that. <clears throat> we can make a choice to be in, in the house with him. We can be baptized believers with him, but I'm, I'm convinced that some people don't necessarily choose to fully embrace a calling from him. Joshua said in Joshua 24, 15, as for me, I, there's all kinds of people here, all kinds of religions in this valley, all kinds of practices, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So he made that choice and he declared it. It was something that was a non-negotiable, uh, unpolluted with, uh, I believe, with a loud voice saying, this is who, who I am and this is who my family, my people are. There's power in the declaration of the choice to follow Jesus Christ. Secondly, there's, a pa there's uh, uh, it was powerful. So, so first is there's the choice is, is declarative and the second one is it's powerful. Uh, when, you, uh, when you see, and I'm not going to go to all these scriptures that I mentioned tonight, <clears throat> and there's going to be plenty of others here tonight, but when God's people declare and state clearly, I'm going to listen to him, I'm going to follow him, I am his, I am, I do belong to Jesus, I want to follow his way, and there is a power in that. Hebrews says, uh, cut away all things that entangle you. Uh, you have a great cloud of witnesses, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, but you, but uh, cut away anything that entangles you or it impairs you from living this race for him. So there's power in making that distinction and that's in stating this is what, who I am and what I want to be. Uh, it's also honoring. There's, a, there's an honoring of the Lord, and he honors us. He said in Matthew 10, 32, that uh, uh, he who uh, confesses me before people, I'm going to confess before the Father. <laughs> but he who denies me before mankind or people, I'm going to also deny him or her before the Father. And there is a sense of, of honoring when I make this choice to declare, and there's power, and there's honor in making this choice, this, this uh, respectful choice to follow him. And it also defines us. It defines this choice to follow him, uh, defines us, defines who we are. Paul said about himself, for me to live as Christ, to die as gain. Well, he was, we, probably you all know this as well as I do, this he was writing, and he was saying, I, I don't know whether it's better for me to live or to die. There's plus, pluses to both of those. But I know this, if I live, I win. If I die, I win. But if I live, I live for Christ. If I die, I die for him. So it doesn't really matter. But what, I, but what he did is he defined himself for Christ. That was it. And so once again, there's power in making that distinct choice. And then Romans 8, 37, <clears throat> Paul, the whole book of Romans, and then specifically such power in chapter 8, he says, uh, if God's for us, who can be against us? You are now overcomers, and his love will carry you through. It's a very empowering, it's a very empowering, uh, invigorating <coughs> life that's born out of this declaration 
to say, I'm wanting and I'm committed to seeking, not just being baptized and becoming a nice, good Christian person to walk in, walk in a church and sit on a seat, but I am committing myself to live and be defined by him. Does that make sense? Hello? Yes. Okay, good, great. Can you tell me who said yes? I want to make sure who's with me. <laughs> I, I said it's Michael. But Michael, okay, Michael. I thought that was you. As long as I've known you, I thought you were in, but I want to have you hear it. I want to, I want to, I want to hear you say it. Um, what is it like? How many of y'all are familiar with group dating? I'm not asking you for, if you're on a group date tonight. I'm just asking you how many of you are familiar with. Put a hand up. Oh, man, come on. You have not heard of group dating? Okay, so let me just remind you, I can see on my screen, on my screen, I see the slide. You all are a very small square on my screen, so I can't really, I'm trying to uh, trying to be able to see you and your responses. So you're going to have to do it more with your voice than with your maybe hands, but tell me what group dating is. You mean like multiple couples going out together at the same time? Not necessarily, but that can be one. Thank you. And who's that? <laughs> I, need, I need your help. Tell me your name when you talk to you. I promise it's going to be, I'm not going to chase you down on your front porch, but your first name, who is that? That was Jamie. Okay, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. So so that could be, but here's here's what I've seen through the years, group group dating to be. And, and sometimes just, it's, you know, people, the more loose term is just hanging out. But group dating means you're going out with a lot of people. I mean, you're, you're all together with, with your, you're hanging, you're chilling with your friends. And, but, but among those friends, you start to recognize, you start to be interested in, in somebody that's still hanging with your friend group, but you're only still hanging with the friend group. You know, so, so, so you do that kind of indefinitely. Do you see that happening in the circles where you are? I'm not going to ask you to say names, but do you see it happening? This is that's a yes or a no. <laughs> are you familiar with the, are you familiar with this phenomenon? Yes. Okay, there we go. Man, I know whoo, it's Wednesday, but I know it's rough. Well, you can make it through. You can make it through this. What I have noticed through the years as a youth minister and as a singles, and I was a youth and family minister for a long time, singles minister, and and, and I'm a counselor, and I see see we have a pre-marriage program called Together Forever. And I, I, I coordinate that and I do the pre-marriage stuff and I watch and all this stuff. When I was, my, when my primary focus was 20s to 35, I noticed it especially. I would notice people kind of noticing each other, and but they wouldn't necessarily do anything. I noticed them noticing. Then they would hang out in groups. I noticed that one guy noticing one girl or vice versa, but they would go for some time and nothing would happen. And then sometimes they would come to me and say, Gary, man, I cannot believe I'm so interested, but I can't seem he won't make the move. And I, of course, I'm not, I really made it my business to not meddle, but I would listen. I would care. I wasn't, I was not a matchmaker, but I would listen. I would care for them. And sometimes I would hurt with them if one of them was interested and the other one wasn't. But what I saw happening with that crowd was something similar that I see at church with church in total. You can hang out at the club meetings and not necessarily sign up. Yes. Yes. Or you can claim, you can hang out at the club meeting. You can show up to church, but you can kind of still just find your seat, sit over there, talk to the same people, sing the same songs, go to the same place after church, and not really say, you know what, Lord, I want to go to the next step. So let's go, Austin. If you'll take us to the next slide, please. And I want to ask you to consider: this is the difference. This is the difference in just kind of hanging out, group dating, and just and going the next step. Okay. God the Father has spoken His message of choice or chosen throughout history. He still does today. You will, and there, here are some of the phrases he said through scripture. We're not going to be able to look up all these, but uh, but if you want to, Austin, if you want to make this available to people, I would encourage you to go and check these out. There's plenty of places. The Lord said, you will be my people or my person, and I will be your God. He said that throughout scripture, but he made that point over and over again. He stated because of identity and because of, 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 of uh purpose and intent this is who you are and this is and we've got this relationship and i have 
I have a will and a desire for you. You're not just my people, but that's big time, but you're also my family. Paul says it in Romans. It's all through scripture. Uh, Paul says it a lot in each of his letters. Uh, and uh, first John, you are my family. You're also my body. Okay. So you belong to me and I belong to you is the, now the, the theology there, we could explore all that, not for tonight, but we could explore that about whether or not we are certainly belonging to him. Some will say, well, it's a little bit bold to say that he belongs to us. But if you're going to state to him, I am yours, we have a relationship, then we belong to each other, the Lord says. And, and he gave his son Jesus to essentially belong to us. And certainly we belong to him in the context of this, this relationship, this transformational life relationship. And then he says in 1 Peter 4, 10 and other places, you have a place in the personal role in my movement. I have a place for you. You can make impact in for my purposes, in my place. Yes, you who does not have a ring on your left ring finger, you can have a significant, a significant impact in this world for me. Next slide, if you would. <clears throat> the variety of roles and the variety of callings. Uh, there are a variety of roles and a variety of callings here. This is just one phrase that Paul said in Ephesians. Uh, it's actually P Ephesians 4, 11 uh, through 13. And you probably, I mean, you're probably familiar with this text quite a bit. But it was he, it was Jesus who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists, all kinds. This was not the extensive definitive list. This was just one. But Paul's message was he created each of us to fill a variety of roles so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith. We become one in him but we also impact this world around us. The next, uh, next slide, if you would. Okay. And again, we're hitting this, we're hitting this for a few minutes. We're looking at some of the people through scripture that who I would argue did not wake up with an assignment. They were not appointed duty. They didn't go to school for the areas and the arenas in which they had impact that God approached in one way or the other. They had relationship with him one way or the other, and he then at one point determined he, he had a specific intent, a specific role, a specific purpose or mission for him. Uh, Noah was a good and godly man, but he was not a boat builder. You know, God saw and God was sick of the sin of this world and the rebellion, the sin. So he picked Noah. Why did he pick Noah? Anyone know? Those of you that are awake in, in uh, first grade Bible class, why why did they pick Noah? He was righteous. Yeah, he was righteous and he had a boat, right? <laughs> Not yet. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. No, he didn't have a boat, but he was righteous. And God said, this is the person that I'm choosing. And I want you, Noah, and I want your sons and their, your wife, and I want your, son, your sons and their wives. And that's it. And I'm, I've got a mission for you. He picked Abram. What was that? What well, he picked Abram to do? What? Father of a nation. Father of a nation. That's right. To be plentiful, to multiply. I mean, he said that to Adam and Eve uh, on back of ways, but he said, "I want you to begin a people." And yeah, you're old, but I want you to begin a people. I want you to to begin the, the beginning of a nation. And they thought absolutely we are prime candidates for that right sarah said finally god picked me i mean he, i'm sitting there waiting right no <laughs> okay which crowd did i got so what did he so, so so who said no me <laughs> 30 <laughs> i love it oh me okay well i'm so me and i are not gonna say but could someone tell me and i who's me Birdie, like what? a bird. Birdie with a, okay, I love that. Okay, so Birdie, uh, you and I, so, 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 what did Sarah, what was Sarah's response? Birdie, I don't want to call you out, you or anyone else. What was Sarah's response to God or to Abraham when, or Abram, when he approached him and said, Sarah, you know, God wants a young couple like us to begin his nation? Laughter. 
yeah, yeah. She, she, she laughed. She laughed. She said, you got to be kidding. And so once again, they were good people, but they did not say, hey, we are the best couple for you to choose to go and begin a nation. Joseph, what was the deal about Joseph? Joseph was a was a good and young and faithful person. He was uh, sold by his brothers to slaves. Uh, I mean, into slavery. He uh, encountered encountered a, a king that stood and he stood up to a king on a number of different levels, number of different ways, including running from his wife. And his wife tried to seduce him. He tried to he confronted the king. Several things. And this man uh, revolutionized in his era of time a space of God's. Uh, a place of God's kingdom, of God's people. And we see on and on and on. Moses. Moses uh, did a little verbal arm wrestling match with God. He God approached Moses and what? Delivers his people from Egypt. Absolutely. Now, here we go. We got a little more energy going. Who was that? That was Nathaniel. That was Nathaniel. Your name is Nathaniel? Yes. Nathaniel, I knew you had it in you. That's great, man. Okay, so, so he said... <laughs> Uh, he said, let's go and bust the chops of Pharaoh. We're going to go and, and uh, we're going to stand up to Pharaoh. He's got, God said, my people are enslaved in Egypt. And Moses, I'm picking you. And Moses said, absolutely. I am such an orator. I am a great speaker. We're ready. Let's roll, right? No. Okay, I got a couple of different glitches in my Bible then. So what did he, so what was the deal? Moses didn't want to. He made up all sorts of excuses. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so he did that. <clears throat> so God said, well, take Aaron with you and, uh, and, we'll, and we'll go forward. You get the drill. You see the flow. You see the theme. Uh, David defied enemies. He stood against animals. He stood against other kings. He fought against, uh, he established a nation. He didn't, but God did through him. And in, in doing that, he and he was tainted. Obviously, we know the story. But David stood up before Goliath and a, an army and said, you will not defy my king. I will defy you. In fact, I'm going to kill you. And so God uh, tapped him as a, as a leader for a, for a lifetime and for many lifetimes to come. Next slide, if you would. We see on and on and on representations of people. I mean, judges, kings, priests, prophets, all through not just Old Testament, but New Testament, uh, uh, priests and prophets, uh, but people all throughout the, the time that God's history, he chose them, but they had the choice whether or not they were going to say yes to him. They're going to choose him. Is that is that right? Am I off? Help me with my theology if I'm not getting this right. Is this the awake crowd? Is this the is this Edmund Church of Christ? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna work with you here. Okay, uh, so so we have this group of people that were that were approached by God and they were told that they were that they were needed, they were wanted, and so God had a mission and a plan for them. They said yes to Him. The rest was history. Two women had miraculous births. One was uh, Elizabeth. One was Mary. They both. Uh, did not ask for the job. They both were, were, were overwhelmed by the thought, but they both said yes. Through the paving the way of, 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 for God's Savior, Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, maybe one of the most unusual personalities in all scripture, uh, said yes to God when he uh, became older and older, and he lived out a mission and a commission for God. And then we see all through... Uh, all through the New Testament, what Peter did through his life, his highs, his lows, his mistakes, his victories, all kinds of talk first and uh, think second, but also all kinds of follow and be bold and courageous for him first and then fail second. Peter lived a life of choosing the way that God called him to choose. God said, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. He said, I'm going to change your name from Cephas to Peter because you're a rock. I've got plans for you. Uh, so uh, next slide, if you would. 
this is what I want you to consider for tonight. The, 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 uh, the common theme through the life of each of the people that we mentioned so far, and it's very possible themes that could be in your life and mine are these four. These are not, these are not exhaustive, but these seem to be themes that show up in the life of each person that I, th those that we mentioned in scripture there, tons of prophets, priests, kings, and judges that we couldn't even get to. In each of the, these lives, uh, and plenty that we didn't mention, there was a preparation, an intentionality. Uh, there was a commitment to general calling, to holiness, to being God's person. He picked Noah because Noah was, like you said, a righteous man. He picked Moses because he just wanted to pick Moses. He, had, he was good and righteous, but he wasn't really a leader. But God made him that. But he was, Moses had been preparing. He'd been doing his thing. David was, David didn't really realize how he was preparing. He was connected to God, but he was a shepherd boy shepherding sheep. And he was preparing for, who knows? God knew what he was, God knew what he, what his preparation was about when David didn't. On and on and on, these individuals that we identified were preparing for a future. I would suggest that those of you in this room, that me and the plenty of others that we know had the same life of preparation. Uh, put a hand up if you've been going to church since you were born. Okay, it looks like, again, small, you look like microscopic, but I thought I saw some hands. Uh, say yes, me, if you have been going to church since you were born. Yes. yes. Okay, I'm sorry, that didn't get it. Say yes, me, one more time, if you are the one that's been going to church since you were born. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. So, so this, so in this, in this attendance, in this study, in this showing up for youth groups, in this showing up for vacation Bible school, in this showing up to, uh, to, to go beyond that. Maybe a Christian college, maybe not, but going to church, being here. Goodness gracious, being here on a Wednesday night, man. I mean, we're talking to prepared people that are intently preparing for something, for living life for Him. But he's also been working on you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest to you that whenever you've had these soul searching occasions, questions, thoughts, wonders about, you know, youth group times when you're going on retreats, mission trips, and you've wondered, uh, maybe God has a plan for me. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I need to maintain this this uh, kind of white hot uh, uh, passion for Him coming off of the retreat mountain or coming off of the mission uh field of you know through the airports and back home or whatever the case is is there something that god maybe i heard a sermon or a message or whatever maybe i had a great small group interaction and there's something i'm convicted about or that he has convicted me about that i might need to con consider do for him <clears throat> that's the next step i believe in the process nathaniel of you becoming or of you zo or of you jan whoever becoming the person that he's maybe calling for something specific. The first two here are the general calling, but the second two, I believe, have more of a personal calling. Uh, so there's a point at which I think we decide, certainly we're going to be church attenders. We're going to be, we're Christians. We're church attenders. We're showing up. We're even the Wednesday night crowd. We go to whatever the case is. We may be even choosing Bible studies in on our, on our off time, we may be doing podcasts, we may be, whatever the case. But there is a point at which I'm saying, I'm declaring that, Lord, if you have a mission or opportunity for me, then I want to be there. I want to say yes to you. I am saying yes to you. As uh, Moses said, here am I, send me. Uh, Isaiah said, here am I, send me. I want you to consider that it's very possible that God's been working on you. He may be having something for you, big or small. It may be right there where you where you are, where you're living now. Or it may be some other place that you considered as a possibility. But he's saying, I want you to consider doing this for me. I want, to, I want you to consider addressing maybe a particular need. I want you to consider going back to a place that you were introduced to when you were on a mission group. I want, to, I want you to go back to that person that you saw on campus or that person at work. I want you to step into that space and you're going to say, Lord, maybe not me, like, like Moses said, 
I can't speak it. Uh, I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. Or you can say, like I believe Nathaniel said about Moses, he said, I'm going to go take Egypt. Yes. It's a declarative statement. It's a choice. And I think that's the difference between some people that, quite frankly, folks, kind of hang out at church and those that say, you know what? I'm going to take a next step and I'm going to declare I am, I'm going to, I'm going to boldly go this next step. Okay. I'm going to boldly do this next thing for him. And then at that point, you don't just declare, but you take action, you activate. There is a preparation for something to come or some things to come. Maybe it's not just one. Maybe it's a consideration about what, how God's going to use me. But then there is that point where you say, you know, I've been putting this off long enough. I was a couple that I that told me for recently they've been putting off something long enough. They're going to now step into something that I've been talking to them for a while about. So now three weeks ago, they stepped in to mentor a young couple. There is a woman that came to me here at Preston Crest. Uh, I, I lead an urban mission ministry called Cover Dallas with Love. And she said, Gary, I want to go with you to some of these places. I want to go with one of your teams, one of our teams to some of the sp spaces in, in, in our city where it's dark, where it's dangerous, where there are people that maybe don't have several things, or maybe there's some ugly things happening. But I feel like God, she said, I feel like God's calling me. She's a mom uh, and a husband and a, and a wife, and her kids are in high school. They're getting ready to be empty nesters. But she said, I don't want to wait for that. I want to go now. Well, she was declaring, I want to, to step into that space. She doesn't have a background in working in that space, but she just said, I feel God's prompting to take me there. So I want to activate. I want to go. I want to do this thing. Would you help me do that? I said, absolutely. You know, you had me at hello. Let's let's roll. And so we talk about that. We but, but talking's not not good enough. Next slide, if you would. So preparation, consideration, and uh, de declaration, activation. Now I want to ask you this tonight. What uh, what is? We got a few minutes left. I want you to really be considering this this these two primary questions. We've been knocking them around for a little bit. Last two weeks. The thoughts about your general calling, how you've been preparing, how God's been working on you. Uh, a, dear, a new friend of mine that's, that is uh, now working with us a lot is wrestling with some stuff that she has been a part of for the past several years. She has a calling. She's working some here now in Dallas with some of our teams and ministries, but she also felt called to a ministry that she, that she was introduced to away from here in another country. And she's working with us now in some areas in Dallas with our church, but she's considering what's going on and what she might do on a, on a, on a, maybe in a space beyond here. So she's working and she's also, she's in prayer. She's in study. She's in connection with God. She's in small groups. She's leading some of that stuff, uh, co-leading some of that stuff with some of our young ladies. She's doing all kinds of things, but she's also considering this other personal mission this other specific calling, because it connects with some uniqueness in her life. So she's doing the general, but she's also wrestling, and she's doing some specific here, but she's also wrestling with some specific at other places. Does that make sense? Yes. I wonder what God's doing. How many of y'all are currently in college? You've not, you, you're, you're, you're not, you've not graduated with your undergraduate degree, and I cannot... You know, I can't, someone in the crowd tell me about what percentage you think that is for the crowd, because I don't know, and I wouldn't be able to tell by hand. Five percent, maybe. How much? A uh, little five percent. Five percent in college? Yes. Okay, so the majority of you are out, are out, are beyond college, yes? Yes. Okay, and so you're in various stages of your life and work and whatever? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I'm wondering. I'm wondering if you are. Uh, I would argue that everyone being here tonight is working on general calling. Your Bible study, your connection with God, your spiritual development, your 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 prayer life, your interacting with church and small group and all that. I'm wondering what He might be doing with you with a specific calling. A calling that might be born out of your, 
And we'll talk about this next week. And I'll be back there. Just a warning. I'm going to be back there in person next week. So be watch, So be careful. I know everyone's going to go to the back row on that one. But you, when you consider your own personal giftedness, not necessarily from aptitude tests, but what you just feel like you're good, you're good at, and you feel that it, it's your, your it's maybe a skill set, but that's just getting you started. That's not necessarily calling. What you may feel like, and we'll talk more about about how you, some specifics about how to identify that, but then some real questions about what the calling can be in your life, and I'll share with you a little bit about what it's been in mine. But your 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 giftedness, your skill set meaningful experiences in your life what is what has been meaningful meaningful for you that can be good and fun and enjoyable it can be painful and hurtful and ugly it could be uh one day in your life it could be a season of your life an encounter it could be a one conversation you have with one person but those spaces of meaning where god spoke into that experience where you say you know i wonder if i might be used by god in this space, that one coach told me I could do this, or I saw my, I saw my, uh, I went to a place and I saw my uh, friend brutalized, and I thought that will never happen again. God loves her or loves him too much. That will never happen again. I'm going to do something about that, or I'm going to prepare myself in this area. Maybe I'm going to be an attorney. And I'm going to go represent people in a particular place of justice, or I'm going to be you, does this make sense? I want you to, maybe, maybe some of you are there right now. Does anyone, does anyone, and again, when I get back, when I get there in person next week, we'll explore. Does anyone have a sense of how you, some thoughts on God's specific calling in your life right now in October of 2021? Yes. Care to share? Yeah, this is Jacob over here. Um, yeah, I met you the first night, right? Uh, I've been divorced three and a half years now and raising my kids, you know, co-parenting my kids. And I, I felt this for a while. I've been involved in another ministry with, that works with uh, men who are going through separation and divorce and uh, issues like that. But I feel like my specific calling has been here lately working more with uh, like single dads, raising their kids, you know, in a godly manner. Yeah, that's, I've been really pushed by others to start a podcast on that. And I don't have any clue on how to do that. So. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's very, you're hitting the nail on the head with me right now. I'm talking about Thank you. I love that. And it really doesn't matter if I love that you're connected with it. God loves that. And it sounds to me like he's, He's using, thank you for sharing that, by the way. And what a great example. Uh, number one, what a huge need. I respect the fact that you're, that you've gone through that very difficult situation. You're, 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 you're loving your child. One child, more than one child. I got a son and a daughter. More than okay. Each. So two children, what age are they? 12 and nine. 12 and nine. Yes. Okay. So, so you got your hands full. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you're working and you're taking care of them and you're co-parenting and you're dealing with the stuff. Uh, and, and it's been, that was three years ago, the divorce? Yes. So so you're dealing with the kinds of things that, uh, well, it sounds like you probably addressed it directly. So if, if people don't address it, address it directly, then then often three, month, three years and five years and seven years look and feel the same. If you're addressing it, then there's a process and you're working through that. And I won't, I won't ask you to necessarily share that here, but I, I think I hear that you're doing that, but you're also what I call, you're going back in the burning building. Most of us come out of burning buildings of some sort, but if you choose to, you can go with God's call back into the burning building and help other people to also find their way out. And it doesn't make you the savior. You're not, his name is Jesus. But what you do is you let him use you to go back into those Egypt spaces, those those spaces of slavery, those spaces of hurt and pain. And I greatly honor that. I would love it if you, if we can connect, because I do a lot of that here and, and always looking for some, we do a lot of single parenting. I would love to maybe connect and see if we might do some leveraging and see how we might work on some of that together. You don't have to, 
but um, I think your I think your eternity in heaven is on the balance if you say no. No, I'm kidding. But I think that uh, <laughs> I think those are kinds of things that that develop as a result of you saying yes. I believe if you if you will allow me, Jacob, that you you were you were preparing, and then you were considering through the years, long before a divorce. You're preparing your loving. Uh, were you a Christian before the divorce? I assume. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Very passive. Okay. Very just thinking off the boxes. But okay. Yes, okay. But 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 that and that may or may not. And you can tell your story. It's not mine to tell. I don't know yours. I I, I can only speculate. But it sounds like something was alive into that space at some point. And so you have said, I'm going to step into that and I'm going to do something something uh, about that. Uh, and I just I just honor that. I really do believe that that is a great example of the person saying. And by the way, you're single. Yes, sir. How does that happen? How can you, as a single person, have a uh, uh, be actively involved in kingdom work and church and lives of other people? Just do it. Just do it. it. It makes it has nothing to do with your marital status, does it? Exactly. And I think it's important that sometimes that, that, that all of us are reminded those that are married, those that are not. I have our single people ministering to our married people. I am a sing, I am a minister with the church here, and uh, single, and uh, run our pre-marriage program, and and I'm the only marriage counselor we have on staff, and yeah, it's a weird world, but uh, but I think if it's if it's and that's not I'm not saying that anything great about me I'm just saying the <clears throat> the irony of that, and so sometimes it doesn't necessarily it wouldn't on paper necessarily sound like it makes the most sense. But when God's called you to certain places and given you a history and a background of certain things, a preparation and a consideration, then and you decide that you're going to declare, I'm going to do something about this. I double negative on purpose. I can't not do this. I will not allow this to happen. If I can help other brothers and sisters, then I'm going to step in. I'm going to activate. And I think, Jacob, you're doing that. And Jacob said that. I'm guessing there's some others in the crowd. Anyone else want to share something we're about two minutes till eight but uh, uh someone else want to share something that maybe you have you're doing or maybe you've thought about doing and if you don't that's fine but i think uh i th I, I truly don't uh want to put people on this put, put people on the spot but i do believe this I do believe that some of the greatest treasures gold mines in gatherings like this are in the seats and we all share this together and some great things can develop uh, as a result of all this. I, I, I've got a feeling that it's possible that Jacob, uh, we may connect. In fact, if you, uh, I don't know if I gave you my information, but if you want to get it from Austin uh, while you're there, then that's cool too. Or if you just want to, I'll, I'll tell you, cause I'm not, uh, my cell phone, 972. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yep. Get there. Yep. Okay. I guess I could put it in the chat, couldn't I? Can y'all see chat? No. 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 Okay. Never mind. 972. 741. Now that's a fake number, but that's just an illustration. No, I'm kidding. That's a real number. <laughs> and if you want to email us, Gary, G A R Y, at PrestonCrest.org. But my point is, is I think this is how God's kingdom continues to work. In fact, I'm going to mention a little free commercial here real quick. Uh, in December, we typically have, as a result of this very kind of thing, this, this thought, challenging, encouraging, particularly the single community in, uh, among, among Christian folk, and we don't limit it to singles or we don't limit it to Christian, but we did, we started uh, 16 years ago, 15 years ago when I came here, uh, a program called Alive, Alive in the Metroplex, or Alive this year is 2021. It's a gathering now. Last year it was it was it was hybrid of people in person and virtual to come together to build community, connection, and friendship, and then to encourage and challenge each other, and then to do this kind of thing. Whether it's go back and serve in places where you're at, uh, build the friendships of community, community and connection, or if it's to uh, maybe just, uh, or if it's to, 
challenge on whatever level, but certainly the friendships and the connections are good. So we're going to do that on December the 4th, Saturday, the December the 4th. Typically, we do it in September, but I bumped it to December this year because of some COVID challenges. We didn't know where the, the, uh, where the uh, Delta variant was going to go, so we bumped it to a couple months. We love it. So it's in person at Preston Crest on that Saturday, December 4, from, from 9 o'clock until, until 3.30. Uh, and then, and then uh, it's also virtual, but it's not so much about an event, it's about our connecting with each other. I'm gonna ask you to consider this. As we wrap up tonight, think about, ask, ask yourself the question, how is God continuing to prepare me? How am, I, how am I inviting him to continue to prepare me? And what kinds of things might I consider being about and doing uh, and then ultimately, what, what will I declare and do for him? They don't have to be huge. They can be day to day. But uh, uh, and I'll share some of those with you next week, some of the things and people that are doing things here uh, and other places. It's an honor again to be with you. Uh, <clears throat> and then maybe we'll hopefully last, next time we'll have, if you want to, a Q&A uh, or just a Q and I'll look, you know, during the headlight, but he, at least We'll have uh, no Q and A time to visit about how we might do some of this stuff a bit, or I'll have some questions. Maybe you guys will have some answers. Pray with me as we wrap up tonight, and then we'll plan to see you next week. Cool, Father God, we are thankful for our time, and we thank you for calling us to this life with you, calling us to be your disciples, to be your ambassadors, to be your representatives, people with a ministry of reconciling, reconciliation, bringing people to you, people of all walks of life in all spaces of life. And you call people like us if we say yes. So God, I pray that you'll uh, give us more direction and move us and shake us, uh, prompt us lightly or, or with a figurative sledgehammer. Help us though to, to uh, listen to your voice and follow you and, uh, and live out that mission for you. I thank you for our time together. We pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. It's an honor to be with you. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you next week. Thank, Thank you. you. You bet.